Hello everyone. Uh, today we will have a special tour. We will visit the Jewish quarter in Jerusalem. So you can see here are some signs what you can expect and uh, we're gonna take this tour and on the way I will be showing you different things. So this is basically the beginning of the Jewish quarter in the old city of Jerusalem. Uh, as I mentioned before, there are four quarters. Uh, there is the Jewish quarter, there is the Muslim quarter, there is the Christian quarter and the Armenian quarter. So we are now in the Jewish quarter of Jerusalem. And uh, there are many different things here that are quite interesting. <laughs> many historical synagogues, for example, um, we will see one very big synagogue in a moment. Um, but today is the first day of Passover, so everything is very quiet. Today is a day off in Jerusalem, in Israel. And it's early in the morning, so there is not a lot of people out yet. So this gives us a a good chance to have a close look at certain things. So now we are uh, gonna go and we're gonna see a very interesting thing uh, called the cardo. The cardo basically means heart and this is a uh, ancient Roman road uh, that was the central road in Jerusalem uh, after the Jewish revolts. You know, when the Jewish people revolted against um, uh, against Rome, uh, they were punished severely. Jerusalem was destroyed, the temple was destroyed, and the whole city of Jerusalem got redesigned. And mm, the main center of the city was moved moved from the Temple Mount which before before the Jewish revolts was the center of the city the heart of the city after the Jewish revolts the Romans decided no that's that's enough we're gonna move everything and we are gonna establish a new cardo and this is this ancient Roman road that led uh, to the Damascus road and we can see remains of it today. Let me see if I can go down there. So guys, uh, we are down here. Uh, I went down to the Cardo, so you can see uh, how low the city level was in Roman times. You see how, how low we are compared to the modern city. So, and this is not like the oldest layer of Jerusalem. Uh, Jerusalem is a layer on layer, civilization on a civilization. So, uh, this road was uh, found, and uh, what is interesting is, I don't know if this picture will be clear enough, but I might add a, a, a different picture from my own collection, but in Jordan, in Medeba, uh, they found uh, mosaic which portrayed this road in Jerusalem. So this is this main road, the Cardo, which we stand on now. You can see the road. This is the, the Cardo, the main road that led from north to south. This is the Damascus Gate. So here would be uh, the Temple Mount. What is interesting is that this uh, was uh, a very uh, important road that existed and functioned for many years and actually you can when uh, uh, Jerusalem is more open not in the holiday uh, you can go over there and see some more of this road but now we will go up and see some other things in the Jewish quarter
So once again, the view on Cardo, ancient Roman road. And this is the heart of the Jewish quarter now. So an ancient heart in the Roman period and now the heart of the Jewish quarter. So there is a nice map here, so I'll show you it so that you know where we are exactly. Okay. Okay guys, so this is a, a map of the old city of Jerusalem. So we are now in the Jewish quarter, which is this blue color over here. We are actually next to the Hurva synagogue over here. Hurva synagogue is one of the biggest synagogues. Uh, it's the biggest synagogue in the uh, old city of Jerusalem. So here is the Armenian quarter, here is the Christian one, and here is the Muslim one. So that's, that's the map of Jerusalem. And uh, this is the Temple Mount over here. So if we are here, uh, we can go a little bit further and we will see the Wailing Wall, the, the Western Wall. So to tell you a little bit more about this synagogue, it's a beautiful building and it was originally founded by the followers of Yuda Hehasid and uh, it was um, built on uh, an earlier synagogue and a mosque. Then this synagogue uh, got destroyed and it was destroyed because uh, apparently the Jewish people did not pay taxes uh, to the local Muslim uh, uh, Muslim government. So this synagogue was in the state of ruin for all, for 116 years, and it was known as the ruined synagogue. But then it was again rebuilt resettled in 1837 uh, by Ashkenazi Jewish community. Ashkenazi Jews are Jews from Eastern Europe. You have Ashkenazi Jews and Sephardic Jews. So here is the view on this beautiful synagogue and in front of it you can see the menorah. The golden menorah it was founded by Mr. Vadim Rabinovich uh, and it was created thanks to the Temple Institute. So this is something that is standing right in front of this beautiful synagogue. And this is basically the, the center of the Jewish quarter. Right now it's basically empty, there's nobody here. Uh, today is a holiday, people are celebrating. You see a great, um, a very big um, tent over here in front of the synagogue. This is where the Haggadah, uh, the, uh, the Passover meal was eaten yesterday. So today is a day off, but thanks to it, we can see everything very clearly. Okay, so one last view on the synagogue and we're gonna go further down. We're gonna go closer to the Western Wall now. So I'm doing those tours to just give you an idea how big is Jerusalem, how far each things are from each other. You can look at those videos and when you visit Jerusalem, you can do the tours yourself. So I hope this is helpful for you.
Okay guys, so before we will move forward, I want to show you something while we are here. Uh, because already we saw remains of Jerusalem from the Roman times. Now we will see remains of Jerusalem from the time of the Jewish kings, of, the, uh, of King Hezekiah even. So here in this location is the so-called broad wall. Unfortunately, this is right now in a state of uh, conservation, I guess, although it looks pretty bad, but when it will be finished, uh, it will look totally different. So what is also interesting here is that you can see the estimated wall height, how high the wall was. This is a really uh, old construction. As you remember, King Hezekiah, uh, when Assyria was supposed to attack Jerusalem, he built a massive wall uh, to protect the Western Hill. We are now on the Western Hill in Jerusalem. And he built this wall to protect that community that was escaping from uh, the northern kingdom of Israel to Jerusalem. So as you remember, Assyria was attacking the northern kingdom. A lot of the cities got destroyed, uh, burned to the ground. A lot of people uh, started escaping. They settled here. And what did King Hezekiah do? He decided he needs to build a wall to protect this new community, this massive influx of people. So that's exactly what happened and that's what we read about in the Bible. And we find foundations of this wall today in Jerusalem. Uh, as you remember the story, Hezekiah not only built a wall, but also created a new tunnel which directed the water from the Gihon Spring to the Pool of Siloam. But that's in the city of David. We might go there today, so we'll see. And I might uh, show you today what is happening around the Pool of Siloam because there are some exciting things happening over there too. So once again, a view on the Jewish quarter, the Huvra Synagogue, the menorah and we're going closer now to the western wall So, you can see now, in front of you, the Mount of Olives. This is like a time travel you see below us are some remains from the crusader times if we pass that we see the temple mount and on the furthest um, on the furthest uh, perspective we see the mount of olives Thank you. 
So we are very close now to the Western Wall, to the Western Wall Plaza. It's right over there. There's a section for men, section for women. You see the bridge that goes to the Temple Mount. Only uh, is the only way for non-Muslims to get to the Temple Mount. There are many other entries to the Temple Mount, but you can only get as a non-Muslim through this bridge. So over here you see the Mount of Olives, the Al-Aqsa Mosque, and the Davidson Center Archaeological Park is beneath where you find the street from the first century. So we'll go closer. So this is the entry to the Western Wall Plaza. You enter through here, downstairs. Actually, you get out here. This is exactly where you enter to the Western Wall Plaza. But we're not gonna enter this time. We'll go further. There's again the Davidson Archaeological Park, which I told you about. And you see all the people are coming to visit Jerusalem. So we were here yesterday. to go see if the city of David is open because I did not show you certain things yesterday so we are next to the entrance to the city of David it says Ir David, City David, City of David. And this is the oldest part of Jerusalem. So this is where the history of Israel, you could say, really began with Jerusalem. It's a national park now you can go in and visit it and there are actually I'm gonna try making also like a model of of uh, the city so that you can see how how it looked back then but it's not ready yet they're saying they are building your next experience so maybe in a few months this will be ready and we'll be able to see the 3D model of Jerusalem. So this is like a tourist area over here where you get your coffee, you have bathrooms, everything's closed now because 
today is a holiday but as you can see I can still walk around here uh, let me check if I can go over there because there's some interesting things I want to show you so here are the ancient stones of the city of David and over here you can see a column that they found here in the city of David so we are perhaps standing now in the location of David's palace because this is like a royal column that was found and a large building is beneath us that could have been uh, David's palace so uh, they're not 100% sure but it is possible because you will see that in a moment so here's another view of this from a different perspective because here is what they believe is the Milo nobody really knew what Milo was until we found this and this is like a supportive structure it supports the big building that was on top of it so here you can see it closely it's like a pyramid that goes up and this is even before David this is believed to be built by the Jebusites on top of which uh, stood the fortress of Zion of which we read in the Bible we have a quote quote from here from Jeremiah 30 18 the city shall be built on its mount and the fortress in its proper place okay guys so this is the Milo this is we got really close to it now so you can see it better and on top of it uh, stood uh, the palace of David or before that the fortress of Zion so this was like the royal quarter of Jerusalem back then of course later on uh, other buildings started to be built here and you can see parts of such buildings over there will get closer to them but those are also very rich people very influential people uh, through the excavations they did here they found seals uh, that attest to the fact that very important people lived here this community was of course destroyed and ash was found um, of burned houses uh, dating um, to the Babylonian invasion of Israel so this is like the most ancient part of Jerusalem that you can see that you can feel and imagine how it looked in the times uh, of King David even and later kings like King Hezekiah so here you can see uh, there is a description of this stepped uh, stone structure so there's like a building on top of it uh, they need to make new pictures I think because this one is fading out but basically um, it's talking that the scholars are divided a little bit and some say uh, this was erected in the 13th century BCE uh, but others believe it was uh, functioning as a structure that was supporting David's palace so either it was either it was before David or David mm. either way it is very old <laughs> so 
this is the oldest part of Jerusalem this is the roots this is the beginnings this is the core you could say and why did David build a city here why why did he uh, why did people uh, created a, a city here it's because of the Gihon spring which is below which came out from below of the city we will not go in to the ancient tunnels uh, where you can actually feel the waters um, but uh, this this is why people started settling here because they found a, a spring that was giving life in this arid climate so you can see the remains of those buildings over here And it's so nice, you know, we are, I am the only person here right now. There is nobody else, no tourists, no even security, nobody's here. So it's quite unusual that I can just walk here and enjoy this moment with you. Let me show you uh, the view also, what we have here. So this is what David would see. Apart from the modern buildings, of course, the Arab neighborhood I was talking to you uh, about yesterday. This is the Kiron Valley. Look how green it is. How green it is today and how beautiful. I did a video once when I was walking down this uh, valley and the colors were totally different. They were yellow, they were brown, but now it's, it's very green because we just had winter. There was a lot of rain and it's the best time to be in Israel right now so uh, one more thing actually two more things I want to say uh, this what you see here is a tower and it is believed to be the tower built by the Hashmonians and uh, it did function uh, this tower plus the walls that were attached to it function until the city got destroyed by the Romans and it is believed that the tower and the walls that the Hashmonians erected they followed the line of the walls that were built by Nehemiah um, when he came back from Persia to rebuild Jerusalem so this is uh, where the walls would be and they would uh, they would surround the city of David I made uh, many different 3d models about the building the rebuilding of Jerusalem so you can check out those videos if you're interested in more uh, detail okay guys uh, there's some one more thing I want to say about this place, which is quite interesting, uh, because this this was a, a house that you can see here. It was a, quite a big house, and what they did find is a toilet seat in this house. And this is this stone uh, which I'm pointing to now with a hole inside. So they found a toilet uh, from the time of. Uh, first temple so uh, this tells you how developed uh, and how rich this community was to have your own personal toilet uh, in those times so here a last look on the houses and here is a like a model showing you how this house would have looked like so you have the steps, uh, step stone structure and on it was a big house, like a mansion. So that's it. And over there, the Kidron Valley and the Mount of Olives. Okay guys, so last one chance to look at the city of David. And then we're gonna go down to the Kidron Valley 
we'll see what happening what is happening there so goodbye city of david <laughs> Okay guys, so a slight change of plans, I was thinking about going to the pool of Siloam which would be in that direction, this is the city of David here, this is the Kidron Valley and here is the Sil Silvan neighborhood, the Mount of Olives is over there and here is the southern part of the temple of the temple mount so i changed the plans because today uh, the pool of siloam may be closed and we won't be able to see much so i'll i'll try to go tomorrow before shabbat but uh, we'll take a different route route uh, we'll go mm, to the golden gate so we'll, we'll get very close to it but before we do that I want you to look uh, in front of you so right now we are standing across from the uh, who the so-called Hulda gates there was only one way to the temple from the south and it led through the Hulda gates so right over there you can see like three arches this was one of the ways to the to the temple and below there is a massive stairway a staircase uh, and those are probably the stairs that were here in the first century so it is possible that these uh, are the original stones uh, from the first uh, from the first century so I'll, I'll just cross the road now so that you can see it maybe a little bit better I need to be careful here because there is no zebra to cross the road okay so let's go in and uh, this place what we see here is uh, sometimes called the Ophel which connected the city of David uh, with the temple so you actually find a mosaic of uh, stones here from different time periods going back to some claim that even times of Solomon or Hezekiah and then uh, later periods, uh, Muslim periods, Ottoman periods, Mamluk periods, so you find everything here. What is also interesting here in this whole complex of uh, different stones, they found many, many ritual baths that were located here. And why were the ritual baths here? Because this was the entrance to the temple. So you would have to come, cleanse yourself ceremonially, and then you would enter the temple. So this is once again another proof where the temple was located. It had to be here, because this is the main entrance uh, to the temple from the south. So you see now those, this archway, and there's another archway, the double archway, but it's not visible from here, the, the trees are uh, covering it. Uh, but this is something remarkable that you find ancient stones from the first temple uh, period the, the stairway uh, is is amazing that you can walk today on the same stones as it was in the times of the temple 
So now we're uh, gonna go further and we're gonna go to the Golden Gate. So you see here's still some some more of this archaeological site. You see how deep it goes. Uh, we are very uh, you see how deep it goes uh, The level of the streets uh, Were much much lower than they are today So this park is currently closed. It's called the Davidson archaeological park. You can visit it yourself uh, the entrance to this park is from next to the Dan Gate uh, where you enter the Western Wall Plaza. So it's quite an interesting uh, sight to see. There was a lizard over here. So, to show you where we are, this is the corner you see now, the southeast corner of the Temple Mount. Uh, we today went to the city of David and of course we visited the Jewish quarter. So we went out through the Dan Gate and then we were in the city of David and I was showing you the all the gates here and now we are on this corner over here I'll cross the road because it be a better view perhaps so once again you can see Kidron Valley. Over there is the city of David that we just visited and the Mount of Olives. So now we're gonna take a walk on the east side of the Temple Mount. So I'm sure you have not been here. Maybe some of you have, but there are some interesting things over here too. So, on the bottom, uh, over here, you see like the biggest stones. Those are the stones from the time of Herod. As we go up, there are smaller stones and a smaller boss. This is uh, from a later period. Because uh, these stones were used and reused many many times but on the bottom on the very lowest part you have the original foundation and 
What you can see here, very clearly now, thanks to the light, is you can see where the temple uh, was expanded by Herod. Uh, because there is a, like, a, like a line that you can see where another part of the temple was built, the temple complex. So we are now entering a Muslim cemetery. This is a cemetery that is here. So this is the cemetery I was talking to you about yesterday that um, some believe that it was built here to prevent the Messiah from coming. So this is it. We, we saw it from a other perspective. We were next to the Church of Nations and we were looking at it from the Mount of Olives. Now we are here. And we can get very close to where the Golden Gate is, the Eastern Gate. So you can see this installation. It has been there forever and nothing's happening with it. So I'm wondering why, why it's there for so long and nobody's doing it and uh, nobody's doing anything with it it's, it's just a total mess So we are heading towards the Eastern Gate, walking through this cemetery. And um, as we continue to walk, we will end up next to the Lion's Gate. So, another gate that we will visit today, the Lion's Gate. So you can already see the Golden Gate. Now, why everybody is so excited about the Golden Gate? Well, there are a few reasons. First of all, this gate stands on foundations of very old uh, structures. So, this gate, of course, is not very ancient. It's, I made a video about the history of this gate, that it was reopened, it was opened, then closed again. But basically, it's part of this wall uh, that was created by Sultan Suleiman the Magnificent in the 16th century. But, uh, this gate stands on stones that come from a much uh, older period. And some even believe that the stones that we find around this gate are from Solomon or Hezekiah time.
so this is the eastern gate as you can see it today let me go up a little bit you have do you see it there are birds living inside this gate so quite interesting so you can see uh, that this gate has many different stones of different sizes but over here are the really big stones and those are first temple period so that's why this gate is so exciting to everybody because it's the only gate that is on the eastern side of uh, the temple mount this was the only entrance from the east and as we know the messiah who will step down on Mount of Olives will be coming through the Eastern Gate so that's why this gate is so exciting to everybody so another wonderful view from Jerusalem Yesterday we went up the Mount of Olives, today we are here and we're gonna go a little bit further to the Lion's Gate and walk a little bit through the Muslim Quarter over there. Okay, so we're still walking through the cemetery, this is the Golden Gate. Mount of Olives uh, and over there Mount Scopus Mount Scopus is, is as you can see it's, it's, it's like the same mountain it's still Mount of Olives it's just named a little bit different but you have a, the tower over there which you can probably see is the Hebrew University on Mount Scopus so So everything, everything you see here is Mount of Olives. Just this part is the most famous one because it has all the cement, all the uh, tombstones. Uh, but this, this is also Mount of Olives. So. Most of Mount of Olives is Arab, Arab neighborhoods. Uh, there are some Christian churches of course over there and as I mentioned there is the Hebrew University but most of the people that live there are Arab people once once more a view on the eastern side of the Temple Mount. So now we'll be exiting this cemetery and you will see a gate. This is the Lion's Gate, sometimes called the Stephen's Gate because there is a church of St. Stephen very close. 
but you will see a decoration of lions on this gate. So this is the lion's gate. You can see the lions over here. And this basically leads us to the Muslim quarter. This is where you go in. Now, so we are now, we just went through the lion's gate. You can see how it's written in Hebrew and Arabic. There is a mosque here. Actually, there's a lot of mosques here because we are in the Muslim quarter now. So, uh, there are some, of course, Christian places here too. For example, you have the location, the probable location of the Bethesda Pools. So, this is where it is, right next to the Lion's Gate. I need to be careful here because the cars are crazy. So, this is a beautiful place. Here you can see a map. Okay. So, if we imagine that we came through here, it would be the lion's gate, the pools we just entered would be here. So a lot of people here. This is a church of Saint Anne. So we can hear the, the singing. So let's go in, see what's going on. can see the location of the Bethesda pools so here's a map showing you the church and the pools that have been excavated so of course Today you don't have water here and uh, after the destruction of Jerusalem many other um, civilizations were creating things here and you have uh, remnants of this uh, through those stones but Mm -hmm. uh, what I want to show you is how deep actually this place is. It's uh, quite remarkable. You can see how deep it goes. So this is a serious serious excavation here
So this was one pool over here. This gives you an idea how big those things up were when you can come and see the people and the church. So it's like a labyrinth here. But it's open today also. That we can walk here freely. So what usually happened is when one civilization was defeated, the other one, the conqueror, usually used what was already here. Uh, he reused the stones, he reused the geography, and that's why we have a mosaic of different stones in many of the places in Israel where uh, almost every major civilization was here. And that's why this place is so special. There's so much history is here. Israel was a very important trade route and and uh, people wanted to control this land that's why it was conquered so many times it was uh, fought over for so many times so here is another view of the pool So this is the location of the pool of Bethesda and for a long time they actually did not know where, where this pool was located. There were different locations provided but none of them were as satisfactory. And of course uh, the pools of Bethesda are connected to the story also from the Gospels, from the Gospel of John chapter 5 where we read about a healing where Jesus heals a man that was paralyzed and Jesus tells him take up your bed and walk and it's remarkable that he was healed because he was paralyzed uh, for 38 years so a very long time so this is possible location where this miracle happened mm. there were two pools here found and actually uh, this is uh, in a way it can explain to us uh, what was going on with the water raising and lowering because as the water was going from one pool to the other uh, the waters would lower or mm, go higher so that's how it worked. So this is this place now. It's very close to the Lion's Gate. You can visit it yourself. It's a nice, pleasant place. Now we're gonna walk out. Look at this beautiful garden here. It's pretty beautiful. So that's nice about Israel, you know. You, you don't need tickets to many of the places you can visit. You can just walk in and enjoy the view. And learn so much just by walking in Jerusalem. There's the city is full of history. It's 
So we went out of there, the pool of Bethesda, the Lions Gate, and now we're walking in this direction. This is the Muslim Quarter already. And this is uh, also the beginning of the Villa de la Rosa. Uh, so you can see the, the different stations that are shown here. And the journey begins here and ends next to the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. So over here, you can actually go, this is the way leading to the Temple Mount. Of course, this, is, this entrance is only for the Muslims, so you could not walk in right here. Okay guys, so if we would continue to walk over there, we would eventually end up in the Christian quarter of the old city. Over there in that direction we have the Lion's Gate through which we came and now we're gonna go on the Herod's Gate ascent. This is gonna lead us to the Herod's Gate. So you had the chance to see Israeli soldiers close encounter. Recently it's been a little bit uh, uh, dramatic in Jerusalem. There's tensions because there is the Hebrew holiday, the Jewish holiday of uh, Passover. You have Ramadan. Soon, Christians will celebrate celebrate Easter. So there are tensions. So now we are in the Muslim quarter and uh, we will get out through the Herod's Gate.
gate over here you came from there this is the Muslim quarter as you can hear <laughs> from the prayers this is where we get out So, thank you for your company today. We had a quite a journey, a long walk. Uh, so this is the Herod's Gate. Over there, in that direction is the Damascus Gate. This is the already Eastern Jerusalem, the Muslim uh, part of Jerusalem. And over there is Mount of Olives, Mount Scopus, uh, the tower, you see over there in the background, that's the Rockefeller Archaeological Park. So I hope you enjoyed this journey. I hope you uh, were able to learn something new about Jerusalem. Uh, I'm sorry for... Uh, my performance today because yesterday and today I am struggling a little bit with a cold so uh, I hope it will uh, it will get better soon but either way uh, I hope it was helpful for you so make sure you subscribe to the channel hit that bell button to be notified of new episodes of the walks that I will do and I will see you in the next episode. Shalom. <laughs>